Within two weeks of walking into the greatest opportunity of a lifetime, I would scrap $15,000 worth of CNC machine parts and the company I worked for would lose a customer worth $100,000 a year. Hey, good morning everybody, this is Titan. Oh, just getting back from the gym and gonna get ready to go to work right now. And I just want to like say hi to you guys, all right? Today we're going to talk about quality and the importance of quality. And I'm going to explain why quality is the most important thing in CNC machining, in manufacturing. It is the foundation that we have to stand on. If you don't have quality, you don't have anything, all right? Hey, before we continue, I just want to say, please subscribe, make your comments known down below because I read those comments and I'm actually putting the answers into these vlogs and make sure you like these videos, all right, and spread that word. And if you haven't been on our Titans of CNC Academy, then make sure you go and check it out, all right? It's free CAD, free CAM, free CNC tutorials for everyone. Boom! You know, just a word to the young guys, right? Machining is, you know, it's a lot of common sense because you don't know everything at the beginning and you gotta learn a lot. There's so many variables in manufacturing and CNC machining and stuff. So you can't expect to know everything. But if something tells you that this is wrong, that there's a better way, don't just keep doing it. You know what I mean? Like make sure that you stop and ask questions, right? I've had to learn some crazy lessons over my years i've been in this trade for a long time something like 22 23 years now and i've learned some valuable lessons and uh not not lessons that i want to repeat either but that's exactly the point is you don't want to repeat those lessons you want to learn from them okay so when something bad happens you know you make a mistake you scrap parts you know something happens with a customer and stuff you know it's important to really like you know ground yourself take an honest look at things don't get don't don't put up a wall or anything right just just own the mistake and say you know what this happened how can i learn from it all right and then document the process document things so that you don't make the same mistake again and then allow that experience to take your workmanship to a higher level all right so i just pulled up at my shop ah oh. And speaking about shops, right? And speaking about quality, that's one thing that I'll say, right? So this is my building right here. I got workers in there making it happen, the front. But if you think about it, my shop, if we don't have quality, if we don't have workmanship, if we don't have a reputation for actually putting out a great product under budget and on time, then we don't have anything right so your prices can fluctuate your different things can fluctuate and stuff but at the same time you got to put the whole package together and the one thing that can't fluctuate is quality so quality is the most important thing period you know speaking about quality i have an actual crazy story and uh i will admit it this one time because like you know how people are like nobody wants to talk about scrap parts and i don't either but i want to teach you guys something and i want you guys to know that it happens to the best of us and uh it happened to me in a huge way and literally changed my life forever and i never forgot it so let's go inside my office and uh i'll tell you this quick story all right oh man it is story time and this is a difficult story oh humbling myself right now scrap i don't i don't ever want to see scrap i don't want to see scrap in my floor you know we we put the right documentation in place to make sure that you know we're inspecting our parts and making sure everything's perfect but it wasn't always like that when you're young and you come into the trade and you don't have experience experience and sometimes you don't have common sense certain things happen and this specific story is about something that happened to me and i never forgot it which is a good thing all right so i was 26 years old i was working at zanola manufacturing i walked into the greatest opportunity of a lifetime not knowing anything about machining cnc's industry i didn't know 
anything, right? But I knew that this was an opportunity and I knew that this company made things. So I sold myself to the owner, Dave Zanola, and I said, Dave, if you give me an opportunity, I will be your best worker within a year. Yep, I was confident and a little cocky back then, but I was likable, right? And he was like, all right, I'll give you an opportunity. So one of the first jobs that he actually put me on was a copper job. It was these little strips and you had these holes going through and then you had a 30 thousandths chamfer on each hole. Okay, so basically I wasn't on the manual mills yet. I was on a drill press. So there was a stack of all these copper parts, right? I think there was like 2000 pieces and you take one of the parts, you put it on the drill press. The drill press had to stop, boom. So it would come down and just put a 30,000 chamfer on each hole and you're like, boom, boom, boom. And then you take the completed part and you put it on the right side. Pretty easy, 30,000 chamfers a drill press. What can go wrong? Oh, and we talk about common sense, right? CNC machine is common sense, but some of us, we don't have common sense, but oh man. So I was doing the parts and it was copper and the copper was actually kind of tarnished. So as I was coming down and actually like chamfering them, I was just like, boom. And then I was looking at it, I was like, man, it's so shiny, it's so nice. And I was so proud of myself. And I was like, boom, 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 done. Grab it, boom, 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 done. And I just started having fun. And I'm just like, oh man, the owner, Dave and his son, Kevin, they're like in the back. Man, they think this is gonna take me all day. Like I'm gonna scream through these parts. I'm gonna show them that like I can get stuff done. I started getting the rhythm. I'm just like boom, 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 boom. I started like and I actually in my head I noticed the chamfer, the shiny part, it looked bigger than it did previously. And today I know that I was like kind of cranking down and I moved the stop on the drill press but at the time i was looking at i'm like oh man it's shiny look at that it's bling like boom it's so beautiful like all tarnished with these shiny chamfers uh i literally within hours like four or five hours i go through two thousand parts boom 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 to kevin and dave's amazement when they walk over to me they were like, you finished all the parts. I was like, oh, done, like next. And they were like, oh man, this kid's cocky and stuff. But they started looking at my parts and they're like, uh. And then they grab a chamfer gauge and they, they check it and they look at the print and they start going through and I'm like, was I supposed to be checking these parts? What's going on? They're like, hey, go do this, do this. They end up walking me back and they tell me that basically, 80% of all the parts were scrapped. They showed me like the, the tolerance was 5,000. So it could go 35,000 or 25,000, but not under or over. And I was doing them at like 65,000, 65. That's like double, which was a huge problem. And I was just like, oh man. And literally there's nothing they could do. The, the strips were like, these skinny strips and this is Silicon Valley, right? So these things have to be like perfect. Like, oh man. Anyway, all the parts, like 80% of the parts were scrapped. They talked to the customer. The customer needed their parts right then and there. And because these were strips and because the chamfers were too deep, there's nothing we could do. And then we couldn't get the material quick enough and the customer ended up going somewhere else for the parts and never came back. And my company, Zanola Manufacturing, lost one of their key customers, a $100,000 customer over me, some kid that was running too fast, right? The lessons of that story have stayed with me through my entire career. And even now as an owner who's been through thick and thin and through everything. It's one of the most important lessons I've ever learned. So with a stop, they trained me and they had me doing everything, but they didn't explain the inspection techniques behind what I was actually making. 
They didn't have me checking every 10th part or every 20th part, right? They didn't put things in place. And I don't think, seriously, I don't think they thought I was gonna get through that many, but they probably got busy. By the time they came back, I had murdered all the parts, literally murdered and scrapped them. It's not a good thing. But at the same time, the lesson is today, if I have anybody in my shop doing anything, they need to have the right documentation, the right inspection tools. They need to have a good understanding of how to inspect it. And they need to understand what the AQL is. Like how many parts do they inspect? What are the key features? And we need to train them and make sure they actually know how to accurately inspect their parts. Okay. I always say it like if you inspect your parts, and you have a good understanding of how to inspect your parts, you're not gonna scrap anything, right? If you have questions about something, then stop and ask questions, right? Use your common sense. And documentation is key. Make sure that you write out the instructions and make sure that you talk to the person who's actually doing the parts and make them repeat back exactly what they're going to do before it so you know that they're comprehending what needs to get done right you know i'll go up to somebody and i'll tell somebody hey this is how you do it and at times you get somebody rolling their eyes like man i did this a million times but as a leader i want to make sure that i say what's necessary right because i don't want somebody coming back on me and saying hey you never said this and i didn't remember i didn't see the documentation so as a leader, I want to make sure that myself and leaders under me and the machinists under me, when they give instruction, they give proper instructions, they get feedback coming back so they know that they actually heard what they were saying, and then they have supportive documentation that actually explains it also. And of course, inspection sheets. One of the things we do good with the Academy, academy.titansofcnc, we teach CAD, CAM, and CNC machining, and we're partnered with 3,500 schools. One of the great things that we're doing is not only are we teaching you how to design and program and CNC machine the parts, but when it comes to like the prints, we're making sure that you have a good understanding of the prints. So this is the Titan 10M from the building blocks, right? So here's the print. We have three pages. So the first part is actually showing you the profile of the part, the thickness. It, there's not too much on this print, so it's easy to actually understand, right? The second one basically puts the islands on it and the dimensions for those islands and it's easy to understand. The third print actually gives you all of the features inside the part, okay? Now, there's a lot of features here, and there's a lot of things that you can actually forget, but what we do on every job is actually give you the inspection sheets. So when you look at the different videos, and you see related files, over here, you're gonna actually have the setup sheets, you're gonna have the prints, you're gonna have the setup checklist where every aspect of setting up the machine is listed. And if you don't understand it, there's a video related to it from stoning the table, putting a device on, indicating it, you know, putting your program in, all of it. There's a video that teaches you how to do it and you basically just walk through it, boom, 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 boom. All right, but besides the print, the most important document basically is this guy right here. This is a final inspection report. So everything that you saw on the print, all the documentation, all the dimensions, just everything is going to be here. Okay. So each page has just all the dimensions, every single dimension. So as you actually finish your part, you actually inspect the part, right? So the student or machinist actually inspects the part and actually writes down the exact number right here, okay? So you just go through, boom, 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 so you can't miss anything. Then your teacher or lead machinist or whoever's overseeing you, they basically recheck everything over here and sign off if each dimension is accepted or rejected. Okay, we basically took one of our first article reports for the aerospace companies we use and we turned it into a final inspection report so that all dimensions could be checked. All right, so we're, we're putting quality 
into the academy. It's important. All right. So again, lesson learned, make sure that whoever is operating a machine, making parts, doing anything in your company, make sure that they actually know exactly what to do. They've, it's been explained to them. You've actually watched it happen and you've actually inspected it yourself so that you have confidence in the process. And also they have the right documentation, the right inspection tools. They understand the AQL, like how many parts to inspect and which dimensions are key. So give your team the proper information so that they can be successful. You guys can be successful. Everybody can be successful and you can build your entire company and yourself on a foundation of quality. Boom. All right, guys, I am out.